this week's experiment, we're going to be taking a look at paper chromatography. And so up to this point, you should have seen some videos describing what paper chromatography is, how we would go about setting up a chromatography experiment. Here we're going to take a look at separating some dyes out of some ink pens or some markers. And so we're going to start off, we've got our chromatography paper. And anytime we start this, our chromatography paper is our stationary phase. So it's going to stand still. And we're going to put our sample, which is going to be our inks, on the line I have at the bottom. And that line there is drawn in pencil. It's very important that we have our line in pencil because we don't want our line, we need our starting point, and we don't want our line to dissolve in our solvent. Today our solvent that we're going to use is water. So I've got my line placed. What I need to do is place my samples on it. So I'm going to take my ink pens. So I'm going to start with red. And then I have my purple. Got brown. Next is green. Blue. And then finally black. Now we want to make sure that we label our samples and we're going to do that in pencil. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to just put an abbreviation. So I'm going to do R for red, P for purple, B for brown, or BR for brown, green, blue, and black. So what we need to do now is place our paper into our chromatography chamber. So the chromatography chamber is going to consist of our stationary phase, again our paper, and then we need a mobile phase. The mobile phase is going to be our solvent. So we're going to put a solvent in there. Today our solvent is going to be water. We want to put just enough in there that it does not touch our <clears throat> spots. We don't want to touch our spots because we don't want it to dissolve right away. We want the solvent to be able to move up the paper and push our spots. So we're going to put just a little bit of water in here. And then we're going to place our paper inside our container. Again, making sure that the water does not touch the spots. So as we can see, the water is already moving up the paper and it's taking the ink with it. And so we're going to let this sit here and let the solvent move up the paper until we get close to the top.
So at this point, we've gotten enough separation. We haven't gone all the way up the paper yet, but we've gotten enough separation that you can see the different dyes present in our markers. So we'll go ahead and remove our paper. I'm gonna let it sit down and dry. So what you guys need to do at this point is record in your observation tables for each pin that we see, record what color dyes you see in those markers, what color inks for each color, and then you're going to have some questions to answer about this. So now that our inks have been separated through chromatography, what we typically do with chromatography is we identify a retention factor. And so that is what we're gonna do next. What you guys will need to do, I will hold up a ruler, I'll make markings, you guys will need to record to your appropriate number of significant figures, and you'll need to do your retention factor calculations. So before we start, what we need to do, and when we're measuring our retention factor, we're always measuring the distance the solvent moved, and the distance the sample moved. So the distance the solvent moved is going to be the highest point our solvent went. So we're going to draw a line. And so what we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance. I'm just going to draw a line in pencil that where our from our starting line up to there. Let's make this darker. So we're gonna measure this line we just drew. So this is the distance that the solvent traveled. So make sure that you go ahead and take your measurement, again, making sure that you record with the appropriate significant figures. The units here are in centimeters. So now what we need to do is we need to measure the distance for each spot. So we'll start with our red spot. That red dye separated into two colors. We've got some red here. And then we've got kind of this pink in here. <clears throat> and so we're going to measure both spots and we're going to record that. We're going to calculate RF values for both of those spots. So first, um, and you typically want to measure to the center of your spot. I'm actually going to go ahead and do this in some ink so you guys can maybe see it better. Normally we would not do that. That did not work. So let's go back. We're going to measure to this line here. So we're measuring again from here to that line. And so what you're going to see hidden here, so this would be one. And then you're going to measure to this line. So go ahead and take your measurements with your appropriate number of significant figures. Next, we'll look at our purple. So our purple has got, again, two different colors here. So again, you want to measure the distance 
from your line to this purple spot and then the distance to this spot. Now our brown didn't really separate too much. It looks like most of it moved. So we're just gonna look at this spot. My green, I've got a little bit of color here and then here. So we want to go ahead and measure both of those. Again, measure to the center. Then my black, we have this color. And we've got this color. I'm sorry, my blue. And then finally, our black. So we have quite a few colors here. We have this, that, and that. So again, you want to measure the distances to the center point of each of those spots. And of course, pause the video if you need to, or go back and rewind if you need to get a clearer picture of our measurements. And so for each ink color, you're going to have, except for the brown, that only has one color in it. So red, you're gonna have two different RF calculations, purple, two different, and get to that black, you're gonna have three different ones. And so you'll record all of this in your data tables.